This is the second part of a discussion about what Microsoft Fabric means for existing investments in the Microsoft Azure data and analytics platform. If you want to find the first part, there's a link in the description. In this second part, Tom started to talk about the relationship between Microsoft Fabric and AI. So there's some fear that an unintended consequence of putting more power in the hands of end users is that they'll be able to make an expensive mess of things. Yeah, that's the, um, I think, AI is there though, right? Let, let's play this through. If we think about fear, you've got one level of um, technologies come uh, to make things simpler. But on the other side, someone's going to fill the, the void left with that simplicity, right? And what could you be doing to best support the business? So if you're focusing on that, your time is now available to do other things. Um, there's two disruptions happening at the same time, and I would imagine that the timing is is well thought through. I think Microsoft's strategy was brilliantly laid out in Satya's book when he took over, and they've been executing against it with a drumbeat. It's been fantastic to see. Um, but in order to be able to leverage the capabilities of AI, you need data. And you can see the value it's generated. Um, large language models are generating huge amounts of insight based on the internet's worth of data, but it's void of anything a company's ever done because it's locked up inside the enterprise, right? So lots of companies are thinking, like, how do we connect the dots between what we've got internally and what's on the internet so that we can help our, our, our end, uh, you know, our users in our business service our customers better? Um, so I think, you know, if, if you've got a really good strategic IT department, they're thinking, all right, if we can have a mechanism for federating information across our organization and with the outside world. And then we can train um, co-pilots um, on top of that. And we can then start to leverage the insights that we've got internally with the data that we've got from our vendors and publicly available. People inside our organization are going to be 10x more effective. And that's what IT is there to do, right? IT is there to make people in the business more effective at their jobs. Um, so there shouldn't be any fear. Like I, I'm optimistic because I'm an optimist. Uh, people probably don't like that about me sometimes, but you know, if I, if I, if I, I'm excited because I'm like, okay, so I have all this talent solving these trivial problems. Um, they're now trivial. They weren't trivial. Let's, let's face it. Integrating all these things together was a hard problem. We need to spend millions of dollars doing it. Um, but someone spent billions of dollars doing it. So why would you do it again? Tough question. And then you you go on to what can I do now? All of that talent is not doing that. And then you look at what they could be doing. That it's really interesting where what we could do. But the data foundation has to be laid right for you to be able to leverage all the cool stuff that's coming down the pike. Um, and I think it's been really good to see Microsoft's thoughtfulness around how they've gone and gone to market with the data products in lockstep with the AI products, because it also helps those users who are given new tools learn. If you think about how quickly end users can start to leverage all this new tech, when it's got co-pilots embedded inside it, the diffusion of innovation from the early adopters through to the laggards in the business is going to be super tight, which means you're going to get a lot quicker value realization, which means that you can invest more because you have to wait less time for you to get an ROI. So if you are quick and decisive and you get on with things, your business could flourish in ways that others won't. So then IT's back to being a key enabler of growth by an organization, right? And I think that's super exciting. So yes, there's fear, but I think um, IT leaders like myself need to really try and figure out mechanisms for enabling businesses to grow quicker, leverage in tech, and not look for reasons to slow it down. So are your customers sort of thinking hard about AI in this, in this world? And, and do they have any concerns about whether you're going to build models on their work and that that's going to leak their expertise because that that's becoming a concern with people wondering like well wh where does the intellectual property for things like dali come mm -hmm. from you know is, is there are there equivalent concerns in your world and how do you see that playing out yeah there are i'll give you a simple example there's i mean job one is to try and keep your customers data safe separate from your own data um, that's the kind of table stakes. That's super important governance stuff that's now, you know, foundational within Fabric. Um, it's been, it's important in every every person's data product. And, you know, if you look at the agreements you sign when you use Azure OpenAI, it's very clear that the models you're training on your data are your, your, your models on your data, right? So, and it's the same for our business too. It's very clear that where the separation of intellectual property lies. 
Um, good example, right? Where Milliman is a is a business that has offices all around the world with customers all around the world with different agreements, right? So the data governance question is what information are we able to train models on? It requires us to be able to understand what contracts we signed with our customers. Um, there may be some really good um, high, you know, if you think about a lot of what we do becomes public domain, <clears throat> right? And it's not like insurance policy terms and conditions are secret, you know? So, um, so there's a lot of what we can train models on top of which, which, which is safe to do so. And a lot which we can train models on top of which we would not be safe to do. Like if we've helped a company decide to buy another company, it's probably not a good idea that that becomes part of a model that we trained, right? So very, very tight data governance, um, building that into the existing processes because every company is already doing it, right? If you think about like we used to work in investment banking, it is very clearly separated um, what you're able to do and what you're not able to do, who you're able to buy shares in, who you're not able to buy shares in, dot, 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 dot. So all of that stuff exists, but now it needs to be codified so a computer can understand how to do it so that it can then do the right thing when it's training models. That's where I think a lot of the focus needs to move to with this is like, it's obvious you need to be able to do it, but you need to be able to do it safely. So building your ethical AI frameworks inside of your organization to be able to do it safely, um, <clears throat> starting to connect the dots with data uh, governance tools, um, uh, building an enterprise-wide ontology of what information you have, building um, semantic models, all those things are not easy problems to solve. They need expertise to do. Um, and it's going to become kind of important for differentiating yourself in the market soon that you're able to do that well. And I presume kind of similarly to Microsoft Fabric being a new data platform that say your your actuaries need to get um, familiar with, uh, from the AI side, we've got kind of new new concepts and principles that the your software engineers are going to have to learn, like prompt engineering and how to do that um, kind of correctly and get the most value out of it. So you've got upskilling required in, in almost all of your personas, right? Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> That's why it's exciting. It's not that your job's going to get more boring. The things that probably you didn't want to be doing anyway are not going to be done anymore. Like Satya says, the drudgery of the work goes away. And it's not that you're going to kick back. I would love it to be honest, that if I could work 10 hours a week and deliver the same value that I was before. Um, but the likelihood is that they're going to want me to do something else for the other hours to deliver more value. Um, so training is super important, making sure people realize that there's a way to move into that future. Um, uh, the GitHub Copilot for en software engineers is a really, really good tool, makes it very easy for you to start to learn those techniques. And you're in charge in a safe way, right? It's like you're asking it to help you refactor some code. You're learning the right ways to ask it questions, to do that. And then when the business comes to you and says, could you build something similar for me? You know what good looks like because you've been using these tools inside of your tool you use every day, right? And I think that's kind of how that innovation diffuses through the business. If you think like what we were doing as software engineers, Ian and I, you know, 20 years ago, um, it's a lot easier now than it was 20 years ago, for sure. Um, and I think there's, it's a it's a hockey stick curve, you know, it's just going to get exponentially easier as the technology gets exponentially better. And the ability to use natural language to ask a computer to do things really levels the playing field um, for everyone to be able to add the value that was kind of locked up in your software engineering department. But it doesn't mean the software engineer is not going to be doing good things, it just means they're going to be doing different things with much higher impact to the business. In the third and final part of this discussion, we look at how Milliman resolves the tension between the long-term outlook that is required in the insurance industry and the relatively fast pace of evolution in cloud platforms. If you enjoyed this, please don't forget to click the like button. And if you want to watch the next episode, please subscribe to this channel.